Yo, what's good everybody? This is John J Gaming on the mic here coming at you with a special presentation of the Memphis Dynasty here on NCAA Football 2012. And we are out here, man. Conference USA Championship. We took one of the worst programs in the country, at least at the time, and we brought them into the conference championship game just in two seasons. We are now here in year number two action. And here we are getting ready to go. Our guys warming up on the field. We find ourselves on the road against SMU as we take on this very good quarterback, Blake Williams. Rory is over 3,000 yards and 36 touchdowns. So, we're going to be challenged here today, man. It's going to be a battle. A battle that I'm going to be excited for. Hopefully, you guys are excited for it as well. If you are, make sure you go ahead and smack that like button for me. Hit that subscribe button as well if you have to be brand new as we almost had an interception on the very first play of the game. But our hands are made of butter, so we can't haul it in. So that will be incomplete. As it brings up a second and ten. Instead, it's Nugent. He's going to make a play on the football. Down the sideline. And it's going to be a touchdown for the Memphis Tigers. Until a flag comes in. It's going to be a block in the back. Antoine Curtis. You know, it wouldn't have even directly affected the play. The block was not necessary. It actually hurts us in a really big way as well. As we had to settle for a field goal there instead of getting seven points up on the board. But we at least still have a lead. So NCBU comes out for their second drive of the game as we've held them to score with so far. And going to throw to the left-hand side and that's nearly intercepted. That is Zach Scott there on the coverage. And now it's third and ten. We're going to go into a cover free defense. We got somebody in the spy. We'll see what we can do. Get him off the field once again. As Blake Williams is going to fake the handoff. He's going to drop back the pass instead though. Throw it over the middle and it's actually going to be caught. And not only will it end up being caught. But it's going to go for a first down as well. As Blake Williams he will affirm his school record. For most passing yards in a single season. He is uh, the leader of that. Among SMU quarterbacks in its school history. So congratulations to Blake Williams. We'll see if we can make sure he bring the pain for the rest of his game though. And second and 10, they try to set up the halfback screen. He's actually got the blocks. Julian Jackson cannot make the tackle in open field. And will finally bring him down. But it is for a gain of five. And it will be a much more manageable third down for the SMU Mustangs. As once again, Looks like they'll be going into a pass set. Four wide receivers out on the field. Throw it over. And it's a running back that's going to make the catch. And again, it's going to be another first down for SMU. As Blake Williams, man, just really putting his full trust in him today. Going to get a bunch of passes off. And eventually, we get hit with the long one. Touchdown, SMU. And the Mustangs get the first touchdown on the board. As Blake Williams extends his school record for most passing touchdowns in a year. So now we find ourselves down 7-3 to three as we try to set up a screen of our own. William Jones gets into the open field. Actually runs over one of the players in the secondary. That's good for a first down. And just a nice execution of the offense as well. We'll eventually get those big plays. We'll eventually get those big moments here. We'll see if this is one of them. Going to hand it off to William Jones. We got a runner. We got a blocker. Downfield. It's a foot race between us and the linebacker. Linebacker can't catch up. He don't got the speed like that. And William Jones answers back right away. Touchdown, Memphis Tigers. As we strike back here in the Conference USA Championship game. And a huge big time run there by Williams you love to see it a matter of fact we actually do force a free and out and our special teams comes through gets us phenomenal field position for us to work with let's see if we can make something happen here on this particular possession as we got a second and ten but we just start this drive out in the red zone so a real chance for us to go ahead and, you know, pick up some yards and possibly another touchdown up on the board. But after another 
dropped by our wide receiver core. We instead got to deal with a third and ten. Going to line up three receivers. And SMU, they bring the blitz. Everybody was covered, and we cannot escape the pocket. So we are forced to take the sack. And ironically, that sack is going to get us outside of field goal range. So, fourth and 21. We're going to try to go for it here. See if we can throw one up for Brian the Kid. He does win off the initial line of scrimmage. Throw one up for him, but it's going to be deflected away. So, a golden opportunity for this offense to put up points on the board. And we could not come away with anything. That's going to be haunting, man. That is going to haunt us, especially if we lose by one possession that could really hurt us down the line but at least for right now smu they will take over blake going to drop back once again looking over to the right inside and he had a guy but he didn't put enough air on that football so loud ryan towns to deflect that pass away is now second and ten now coming up williams dropping backs got more a little bit more time to work with but throws it to the right inside and i kid you not I have no idea how this pass is made. Coverage was there. Multiple guys in the vicinity. Went up for the interception. And it just somehow gets through. I have no idea how it happens. But, yo, maybe it's SMU's day today. I have no idea. But either way, our defense is put into a tough spot here. Once again, as we now find ourselves in a goal line situation. First and goal from the five-yard line. Dropping back, it's Blake. We're going to let it side, but it's going to be broken up. That is Zach Scott that is able to make a play on the football. So now that brings up second and goal. Trying to get that goal line stand. Walking to the right inside, and Blake Williams throws a strike into the end zone. Touchdown, Mustangs. And that was caught by Tyrell Steffens, who is going to break the school record for most receiving yards in a season at SMU so just a really big offensive season for the SMU Mustangs as they have a passing attack that has never seen before in SMU school history it's going to give us a lot of problems for us to go ahead but we do pick up a good chunk of yardage off of that jet sweep and eventually will help us set up a third and in inches We'll see if we can bamboozle the SMU front with a halfback draw. And we do as William Jones is able to find the space and pick up a first down for us. A running back that's had a great season so far. Almost 1,200 yards rushing. See if we can build off of that as we get a big throw downfield over to James Pittman. And now just a few yards away from taking the lead. Can we do just that? It's going to be harder as William Jones gets hit. Right in the backfield. Massive loss for us there. As we try to bounce back on a second and goal. Looking over to the right inside. James Pittman able to find the space. And finds his way into the end zone. Touchdown Memphis. And the Tigers respond with a score of their own. And we have a magical first quarter going on right now. This is a score of some NFL games when it comes down to it. 17 to 14 going to be your score at the moment. It's been a high-flying first quarter of action. As speaking of that first quarter, that will be coming to an end. We are number 20th ranked team in the nation and doing what we're supposed to be doing so far. We have a three-point lead after one quarter of play. So now, second quarter of action now officially underway as we got second and seven now coming up. Looking over the middle of the field is Blake Williams, but looks like his receiver for some reason was not looking for it, which I'm pretty surprised about because he was pretty open. I could have made that read, but instead, it's third and seven, and Blake Williams will throw again to the right-hand side, trying to set up that halfback screen, but a little bit of miscommunication there. But unfortunately for us, we don't do anything with the with the ball on offense. So now SMU comes back out onto the field. This time they pick up a first down right away as Blake Williams. He had a receiver that was wide but naked open. And now we're looking at an SMU squad that is sitting right on the outside of field goal range. First and 10 following the big pass play. Blake Williams drops back once again. This time 
We're going to throw over the middle of the field, but that's going to be incomplete. Yet another, you know, read that, you know, something that should have been caught. Receivers aren't on their top-notch stuff today, especially after that drop as well. But there's a flag on the field, though. Looks like they're going to call it a face mask against us. So we bailed them out there as that pass was clearly dropped. So now it's a fresh set of downs after the face mask penalty. And this time, Blake Williams starts to find a little bit of a rhythm. It would make completion over the middle of the field. Steffens, that receiver that is having a really a, a one-of-a-kind season for the Mustangs. He just hit 100 catches on the year. We'll see if he can get catch 101 in the end zone as he looks over the middle of the field. But it's going to be dropped. A touchdown that would give SMU the lead. And it's straight up dropped. You hate to see it. So instead, it's third and goal. Although SMU has been decent on third down. Dropping back. It's Williams walking towards the end zone. But it's nearly intercepted. John Curtis had his hands on the football. But cannot corral it in there. So now a short field goal attempt ensues. And the kick is up and will be good. So our defense, at least this time around, it does bend, but they will not be breaking, though, as we got a tie ball game. So now our offense takes over with this tie ball game in hand. We'll see if we can retake the lead here as we start with a third and eight on the wide receiver screen. It actually works to perfection. We do get a little bit stuck there for a split second, but it's still first down for us anyways. It allows us to keep the drive alive. But we're also having some problems on the offensive end, at least in terms of having some consistent completions down the field. Eventually leads to a third and long after Anthony Douglas did have a short loss. So we'll try the corner strike here to see if we can strike the heart of his defense as we are looking towards Anthony Douglas there, but not on the same page. Threw that pass way too early. So once again, an empty possession for your Memphis Tigers as SMU is now given the chance to take the lead. Throwing over the middle of the field. It's a completed once again. A first down for the Mustangs as they get to roughly the 35-yard line. As now, second and 10 coming up. Couple plays later. Going to try to go for it all here. One-on-one -on -one matchup. But John Curtis makes a great play on the football and now here comes a third and long critical third down as SMU has quite a bit of the momentum so far and we get a penalty on the field it looks like they will be calling that false start on SMU so that does make it third and 15 now a much harder third down to convert on Dropping back, it's Blake Williams looking. He's got time, throws to the right-hand side, but it's deflected away by one of our defensive linemen. Then we sent back into coverage, and we're able to get the stop on defense. Score remains the same for now. We'll see if this offense can get going again. Richards looks to the right-hand side, looking for somebody to get open. Eventually finds Brian the Kid downfield, and Brian the Kid makes a play. First down for your Memphis Tigers. We'll look to throw again. Another first and 10. Got running out of time, though, as we tried to throw the football away. We got confused, man. We got confused because we were thinking about how to throw it away in NCAA 14. It's a little bit different in NCAA 12. It's a different button and a show there. Third and 24 that we got to deal with instead. And we had to throw it to our deepest route possible to have any chance of picking up that first down. And it was deflected away. So a promising drive for us. But then some miscommunication really did hurt us there on that particular possession. Still a tie football game. Can still go either way. Who wants it more? Second and ten. We're going to send the blitz here. Make sure Blake Williams feels us on the pressure. But he has time. Throws to the right hand side. And just overthrow his receiver. He did have a step on our corner, Tommy Myers. So thanks to another incompletion, it's now a third and ten. Williams dropping back. He's got the time. Throws it right inside. And they do not give him the first down. 
It's going to be fourth and one. We'll see if they go for it here. And they're going to show some balls. Bringing out the cojones because they're going for it on their side of the field. Fourth and one. Fires, but it's caught. But by one of our defenders, it's Ryan Towns with the key interception. Would it have been better to just knock it down from a field position standpoint? Probably. But it's all about the highlights here, baby. And now we go back to work after that turnover. As we take over on a second and 10 now, Richard trying to set up on the side, but he throws an interception on his own. You absolutely hate to see it. And now SMU takes the ball back over just a couple of plays later. A devastating mistake there for Jesse Richards. And now this explosive SMU offense takes over on our side of the field. Throws to the left-hand side, and we got a foot race down the sideline. A couple of defenders are able to eventually come in and corral the receiver down. But now in a perfect position to take the lead for the first time since the first quarter. Throwing to the left-hand side. It's going to be the tailback. He's got some speed and using it to his full advantage. Now it's first and goal. Defense needed in the bend, but not break. Blake throws over the middle, and it's going to be caught for a decent amount of yardage. But they do use one of their timeouts. They got one timeout remaining, and we'll see how they play the remainder of this drive. A lot of it's going to have to do with how they attack on this third and goal. Haven't really ran the football today. They choose not to do so still, even though we put a front that was favorable to run the football but that does not matter to this Mustang squad they're determined to bring a conference championship home and they're going to try to go for it here on fourth down Blake Williams throws to the left hand side but it's deflected away another daring play for our defender as that second fourth down conversion is going to make sure that this game is going to remain all tied up going into the halftime locker room it could go in either direction. One half to decide who wins the conference championship. So that's what hangs in the balance here. The Conference USA Conference Championship. It's all knotted up after one half of action. SMU will start with the football to begin this second half. As we'll see what kind of adjustments are made by both teams. Or are they going to stick with what they know best? Third and one. As SMU is looking to not go free and out on their first possession of the f second half. They go with a wide receiver screen. And now it's a foot race down the sideline. And that is Rocky Scott that is able to bring him out of bounds. And thankfully he was able to do just that. Because if, if he stayed in bounds there and not make that tackle. Man we were going to have ourselves a big problem on our hands. We might still have a problem on our hands. As SMU, first drive of the second half, they are driving right down the football field. Third and inch is coming up as we try to get him down. We'll see if the second third down conversion is favorable to us, and it is. As that is a misfire down the right-hand side. And the Mustangs, they go for it another time. This will be their third, third fourth down conversion attempt. They're 0 for 2 so far. Blake, he's got time. Fires over the middle of the field, but almost throws it into the hands of Julian Jackson. He can't bring it in, but, you know, that time around, I really don't mind that, you know, because we get better field position because of it. So, you love to see it. Our defense is giving up some yards, but they aren't breaking, at least not yet. But we need our offense to come in and help a little bit. Defense has been carrying the day so far. We'll see if our offense can do a little something here on this drive. As we we'll look to go with a vertical route. But that's covered. Nobody is open. We try to throw it up. But it's incomplete. Receivers just having a difficult time getting open. Against this SMU secondary here today. And now the Mustangs will take over. A short drive that I didn't want to go ahead and do. But... You know, unfortunately, that's just the name of the game right now. Defense is going to continue to be put under some very severe pressure. As Stan Green, he's been going off as we've been putting a lot of uh, 
focus on Terrell Steffens to make sure he doesn't beat us. And Green having a great day. Seven catches, 140 plus yards. It's been absolutely ridiculous so far. But now we got a second and 10 here coming up. We'll see if they throw it. And look at that. They throw it once again. No surprises here, but a little bit of a misfire on their end. And now it's third and 10. SMU has struggled with their third down conversions today. Only 30% on the day. They're going to look to the right hand side. And oh, we almost had the interception. We had it. And unfortunately, just could not make the play on the football. We was right there. We are ready for that user interception. And unfortunately, it's not meant to be. But maybe we can get an interception on the other side. But that's dropped as well. That's Mitchell that had his hands on the ball. He had the gloves and everything. I guess the gloves don't help out that much after all. That's why he plays DB. So now, third and ten. Williams looks at the right hand side. It's going to be caught. But his foot was out of bounds though. So now SMU, they will actually bring out their field goal team out onto the field to attempt this 44-yard field goal. And their kicker is money, man. Because he sinks it right through the uprights. Those 40-plus yard field goals in college, not the easiest kicks to make, at least for the average college kicker. But this one's got ice in his veins. As now SMU, they will take the lead. And after a free and out by your Memphis Tigers, we have a chance to see SMU extend that lead even further as they're already on the fringes of field goal range. As we know of his kicker, we have established that he has the range to get the job done. Is now first and 10 looking over the right hand side, but it's going to be incomplete there. So now second and 10 coming up as looking back. Dropping back in the pocket. It's going to get it out. It's a wide receiver screen. We are bamboozled. And we give up the first down because we were not looking for that screen. Our defense seems in general since we started this series. It's had a really hard time stopping those wide receiver screens. Haven't really gotten a beat on it yet uh, as, you know, trying to get more experience. Really playing this game in general. You know, it's, it's definitely because NCAA 12, I'm telling you right now, for those of you that are interested in buying it, but you're used to playing NCAA 14, it feels different, man. It, like, what you can do in 14, not going to be always able to necessarily get away with in NCAA 12. So, you know, a little bit of a disclaimer, if you do plan on buying this particular game, is the kick is going to be up, and it will be good. So, field goal is made <clears throat> once again, and that field goal will extend the lead here. At home for the SMU Mustangs. They got a six-point lead now. <clears throat> so now our defense is back out onto the field to start the fourth quarter of action as we actually ended up playing the ball to get in the third quarter. So, you know, we're going to need those fours up if you are, you know, watching this live right now, you know, putting it in that comment section or, you know, wherever, you know, in the comfort of your own home or wherever you're watching this. Conference USA Championship game. Is that a huge play? How about them apples? And that is Tommy Myers coming through and making a play on the ball as Blake Williams did not have the time to get that pass off. And now it's third and nine. Dropping back. Williams going to get it off the field, but we give up the crossing routes. Vince Tate and company could not bring them down in time so that's a critical third down conversion for the SMU Mustangs later on in the drive they throw again what a surprise it's been a ton of throwing for SMU they have really treated the running play like a literal and I mean a literal uh trick play right because Blake Williams this is pass attempt number 64 and that will also be caught for completion a lot of throwing attempts there for Blake Williams. We'll see if they can slow down a little bit. But they're going to continue to ride the shoulder of this quarterback. And we got a forced fumble on the field. Somehow ends up being recovered. But man, huge play there to give our defense a little bit of breathing room. Another score given up. It now makes it a two-possession game. So critical for a down right now as that's going to be incomplete actually this is not going to be an easy field goal we'll see if special teams comes through 
and forces a miss. This is going to be about a 46-yard field goal attempt, but it's on. No! It deflects in. It doinks inward. So not the prettiest kick in the world, but it is made, and it is a critical make as well because SMU now has a two-possession lead. So a lot of urgency required for this Memphis offensive attack. So they have not yet scored here in the second half of action. They have actually been shut out so far. So we're going to have to ride William Jones. We're going to have to ride our star players. As it looks like SMU, they're going to get ready to send the blitz. They do indeed, but we pick it up decently. Just nowhere really to go with the football once again. We tried to dump it off, but just didn't have enough time to get a good ball out there. So now, with second and ten coming up, as Richards drops back, looks over in the middle, finds Chris Washington, who turns this into a foot race and finds his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers! And did we need that in the worst way? Huge touchdown reception as Chris Washington runs away from the entire Mustang defense. And after a successful extra point, we're now down to just a two-point game. This drive becomes critical because if we can keep him out of the end zone, we have a real chance of coming out here and winning this game on our next drive but defense they really need to come through right now and that's not how you want to start a drive big gain given up and they're already at midfield next play Williams drops back over to right hand side he's going to get it out to the perimeter again as that's another first down that's Ryan Towns there to ultimately he's going to assist on the tackle alongside Tommy Myers so already across midfield and a first down will get him into field goal range, which they almost get here. Thankfully, that pass was deflected away. We can live to fight another day. Second and 10 now coming up. Dropping back. It's another Blake Williams pass. Just finding a soft spot in our zone defense at the 30-yard line now. And SMU is indeed in field goal range. Their kicker has certainly proven that. So down to the last five minutes of this game now. That, that's another thing that we got to worry about. Got to worry about the clock. Make sure we give ourselves just enough time as that is nearly... Bro, if that pass was completed, it's barbecue chicken, man. That, that would mean a potential dagger here for the Mustangs. But they run the football here. We haven't really seen them run the ball at all in this game. But, you know, we get so used to them passing the ball. We weren't even thinking about a halfback draw. And they got us there. But they choose not to run the ball again on a third and short. And they're going to complete this pass again. Another huge play downfield there for Blake Williams. As he's literally at 50%. But throwing for 500 yards on the game. And it's going to get even bigger for Blake Williams. Big time touchdown for Blake Williams. As with four minutes left to play. Oh, we gave up another touchdown. And you know what's worse? Our offense comes out here and they go free and out. They, they're they fumbling the bag right now. So really not looking good in terms of our chances of winning this football game. Vernon 1 coming up. We tried to send the blitz early, but they pass it on a third and short. Convention says run the football so you can get some time off the clock. And it really forces us to start using our timeouts. There's less than two minutes left to play in this game. About to be a minute and a half. Throwing two to right inside. And man, we could have really used that interception there. But instead, a field goal attempt on the way. The kick is up. And it's going to be good. So now down by 12. But minute and a half left. Got no timeouts left to work with. We will truly need a miracle if we want to come back and win this Conference USA Championship. So we'll see if we can have a miracle on ice here as we going to have to really push this football downfield. We can't wait. We got to attack downfield and we get a matchup run away, but we couldn't get enough on there for Chris Pittman. He won off the line of scrimmage initially, but just not enough air on that football. But we'll still attack 
Rufus Lee down the field looking to the right hand side. We find Brian the Kid. And not only does he make that catch, but that face mask penalty is huge because not only do we get some extra yards, but it also stops the clock for us. We have time to call our next play. First and 10 from with 111. Left the play. We get another huge reception out to Mitchell. And right off rip, we got to go with a no huddle offense. That clock is going to start as soon as we're ready to snap this football. We're going to try to go over Curl's route, but we're making some adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Pittman, he's going to attack downfield, throws over the middle, but it's going to be dropped. But it does stop the clock at 102. Next play, we're going to try with a deeper Curl's route, and we'll send Martin out into motion as Richards has some time run out on him, and he nearly throws a game ending interception now it's third and ten a field goal simply not going to cut it anymore we got to throw towards the end zone third down looking over the right hand side but that's nearly picked off trying to target a backup running back sam martin and our last gasp of air we have to get 10 yards to keep the hopes and dreams alive fourth down richards Drops back, fires over the middle. He had a guy. He had a guy, but he overthrew him. He overthrew his receiver. And that is going to put it in as SMU in our final game in Conference USA. We lose the conference championship here on the road. 36 to 24. A painful loss to end basically our regular season all right boys so we end up taking our second loss of the season this one hurts man we were in this game we had a chance to win this game but in the second half we just let smu pull away but congrats to the smu mustang so on winning this conference championship now as for our stats here today and i'm gonna be honest jesse richards was not that good today 12 for 37 on the day, 196 yards, two touchdowns and one interceptions have to be more efficient with the football. One person that did play extremely well, though, is William Jones. He ends up with 19 carries for 109 yards and a touchdown. He was able to find some running room against his SMU defense. As for our receiving core, we did not have a single 100-yard receiver in this game. But James Pittman did end up finding the end zone with five catches and 50 yards. Chris Washington, though, he only made one catch today, but it was a big catch. It was our really our only touchdown that we scored in the second half. Now, defensively, our, def our DBs were very busy today as SMU threw the ball nearly 80 times today. Tommy Myers led the team in tackles today. He had seven solo tackles in this one. The second person was Ryan Towns, who only ended up with three solos. That being said, we did end up getting to the quarterback a couple of times here today. Pat Taylor was able to go ahead and get a sack for us. And then Antoine Curtis was also able to get a sack in this game as well. Finally, in terms of interceptions, listen, we made turnovers. We made plays, but just couldn't fully capitalize off of our turnovers. Julian Jackson, Ryan Towns, and LaRue Nugent all ended up with interceptions we did also have a couple of forced fumbles as well pat taylor and rocky scott has forced fumbles with only one recovery coming for rocky scott so defense they did their job in terms of creating turnovers we just could not take advantage unfortunately and that was the reason why we are not conference champions this year breaks my heart so for our constellation prize since we are not going to be a conference champion we are actually going to go to the Ticket City Bowl down in Dallas, Texas, and we're still going to be a top 25 team. We're still ranked number 25 in the country, and we will be taking on Michigan State when we go down to Texas on New Year's Day. We do end up winning a couple of awards as well. Bowen ends up winning the Lombardi Award for our program. We also have the Luke Graza Place Kicker Award going to our kicker tyler Perry, and look at this we end up winning coach of the year that 11 and 2 effort was indeed recognized so next episode we will end up wrapping up the season as we will play our bowl game we will go play against a big 10 squad in the michigan state spartans who finished the regular season seven and five 
looking to finish the year strong. Would love to go 12-2 and, and cap things off with our first Power 5 victory in this series. We have not made that happen yet. Well, no, not our first Power 5 win in bowl action. Last year, we took on Oregon State. Did not go very well. Let's see if we can turn around, get our first bowl win. So, should be exciting episode still, and I'm really happy to, you know, make those things happen. And if you're excited about that as well, I need you guys to go ahead and do me a favor. Smack that like button for me. Hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel. This is John J. Gaming on the mic signing off, but I'm hoping you're all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.